Hey guys, Level Cap here, and today I'm going to give you my personal opinion on the Battlefield 2042 reveal, the trailer, and all the information that came with it. For those of you who don't know anything about me, I've been covering Battlefield on my YouTube channel since 2011, so basically 10 years now, and I've played every instance of Battlefield that was released at least on the PC side of things. So from Battlefield 1942 up to present, I've played all of it, and I've really got gotten into the nuance and balance and strategy behind the game. So I'd like to think of myself as somebody who can really take a level-headed opinion on new Battlefield games coming to the market. All right, now upon first viewing of this trailer, I had a huge grin on my face. I've been wanting Battlefield to return to a modern setting and Battlefield 2042 gives DICE a huge amount of flexibility. What I like so much about 2042 is that it means we can have all our favorite modern military weapons and vehicles injected into the game, but it's also slightly in the future, so we can make up fictitious wars, fictitious environments, we can fight in any city we want around the world because the writers can make an excuse as to why we're fighting there, and we can also inject a few weapons that maybe aren't available in modern military arsenals yet, like a robot dog with a gun on the back or a wingsuit mid-combat, you know, things like that that can inject a little bit of that extra battlefield spark into the game. The rather vague narrative around this future war is fine with me. The fact that they are not going to have a single player to back up the multiplayer setting, again, is totally fine with me. I know that some people are going to be upset that there's no single player. Um, I look at it from two perspectives. One is the economic perspective. The cost of developing a single player is extremely expensive, often much more expensive than the development of the multiplayer side of things. So if DICE can take that budget that they're gonna spend on single player and inject it into multiplayer and extended live service content and tons of other things coming out, that's great. That's what I mostly spend my time with. You run through the single player once and then usually most people never play it again. Some of the Battlefield single players I never even played all the way through, so if DICE is gonna stick their money anywhere, stick it into the multiplayer. And the second angle that I look at it from is that, well, just I like challenging single player games that are innovative and interesting, and well, Battlefield single player games have always sort of tried to cater to just the largest group of people, not make it too challenging, and it usually just becomes a very muted, dull experience. So I am by no means upset that they are cutting the single player. It's honestly good news in my book. All right, now let's talk about the increased player count and the other things that are changing in the game to deal with that situation. 128 players. A first for Battlefield, at least in an official capacity. Now, 128 players is exciting as it increases the opportunities that DICE has to create a Battlefield that feels larger, more immersive, more balanced in a way where there's almost always going to be enemies all over the place that should make the world and the maps feel much more alive and maybe reduce things like ghost capping points and stuff like that. But it's also going to make the game much more challenging to design. You can't just add 128 players to a 64 player map and expect everything to go well. It's going to be an absolute disaster if that was the design philosophy. That being said, it does not sound like DICE is doing this and it sounds like they've been testing extensively to make sure that 128 players flows properly. DICE spoke about a new cluster capture system for capture points in Conquest game mode. So rather than just having A, B, C, and D flag, those flags will be broken up into multiple capture points to hopefully break up the choke points a bit better and get combat to be, well, less crazy in certain areas, but also just to spread it out in a more meaningful way and create more engaging battles on those capture points that don't just all focus around one single flag or objective, but are rather spread out in a more meaningful area. This sounds great. In theory, it sounds cool. It sounds like they've been testing it out and I assume it's been working out. And personally, I've always had my gripes with Conquest despite DICE updating it throughout the years. I felt that they've always held back with some of the things that they could do to make the game mode just flow better, feel better, be less campy, have less ghost capping. There's a lot of things that they could do to implement to make Conquest just feel like a better game mode, and this new cluster design of capture points seems like an excellent idea, and I can't wait to test it out. Now that being said, one of the more disappointing things about the new player count update is that, well, last gen consoles are not going to get 128 players, they're going to get the 64 players, and that's 
brutal. That is basically the difference uh, that Battlefield 3 was on console. I think console were capped at 24 player max where PC could get 64 players. And I mean, it's a night and day difference. The experience is completely different and that's kind of a bummer for old gen consoles. I mean, it's good that the game's coming to last gen, but it is all that much more incentive to get next gen, which I know a lot of people would like to get and due to the current situation and hardware shortages, most people can't get it. Hopefully by the time this game releases, anybody who wants to get a next gen console can get it so that they can experience Battlefield with 128 players. Now, Conquest is not going to be the only game that supports 128 players. Breakthrough uh, is going to get 128 players as well. And this is going to be a more narrow, more choke pointed game mode as far as I can tell. That with 128 players is going to be absolutely nuts. Obviously, like before, DICE will have to balance it properly. I imagine they've been playing it out, but this will probably be that game mode where if you want to look over a piece of cover, a concrete wall, and see 30 or 40 soldiers just like duking it out on screen at once, that's probably going to happen in this game mode. That sounds absolutely awesome. I can't wait to see it. It's probably going to be insane. And it's almost certainly where we're going to see some of the most intense combat in Battlefield 2042. Now regarding the other game modes, Hazard Zone has been announced, but we don't exactly know what it is. It's a all new high stakes squad based game type. It sounds like it could have some roots with a bunch of like four man squads running around and trying to capture objectives and maybe competing for a top spot on a scoreboard similar to a battle royale or maybe something in the veins of that. Um, DICE has not confirmed any official battle royale for the game, but they have been kind of elusive around the subject, so I would not be surprised if something with the battle royale element is coming down the road. And then they also have a to be announced multiplayer experience that is being developed by DICE LA and is another exciting new game type for the franchise. The experience is a love letter to Battlefield fans and one that longtime players will feel right at home with. So I'm trying to think of older game modes that veteran fans would really appreciate. The only thing I can think of off the top of my head is the Titan mode where you had to like launch up on top of these big flying fortresses in Battlefield 2142. A lot of people really liked it. Granted, Battlefield 2142 kind of split the community a little bit because it was um, very futuristic compared to modern military. So um, that was a good mode. It was fun. It'd be interesting if they brought it back. They tried to sort of bring back an homage to it in Battlefield 4 with the carrier stuff going on. Carrier assault, I believe it was called. But um, yeah. We'll see what that one is. I, I'm honestly kind of clueless as to what DICE is working on. Now, when it comes to the new specialist system, this is something that I'm also pretty excited about. It's not super revolutionary, although it might sound like it on the surface, but it is a good improvement in my opinion to basically just building classes quickly or selecting classes quickly. So before, if you only had a four class system in a previous Battlefield game and you wanted to modify that class to suit a slightly different purpose. Say you had an engineer designed to repair vehicles and you needed an engineer designed to destroy vehicles. Well, you could either have a saved loadout slot, which there's been tons of problems with in the past and the UI has always been a little janky, or you just go in and swap out all the gadgets and the weapons to play in this style that you wanted or needed for that specific moment. Now, instead of having to modify your class on the fly, it sounds like those classes are just going to have a bunch of subsections of specialists that you can choose between that will all be suited for slightly different roles. Plus, they're going to come with their own unique gadgets and also traits. Now, traits might sound a little bit more like Overwatch voodoo magic, but it's actually not really new territory for Battlefield. We have gotten things like field upgrades in the past, which have given you basically passive abilities that improve you on the battlefield, like fast unspot, reduced fall, um, better holding your breath and stuff like that. Those have all existed in battlefield games before, um, but these new traits seem a little bit more interesting. For example, Casper, who's a recon class, uh, gets the trait movement sensor, and this will be used to locate people on your minimap or your movement sensor when they get too close to you, which will be a valuable asset, I guess, when you're 
sniping or camping somewhere. Webster, who's the assault class, his trait is pretty kind of basic and falls more in line with what other battlefield traits have been in the past. Uh, it's called Nimble and it'll let him like ADS faster and I think aim more accurately when he's on uh, zip lines and stuff like that. Also, he comes with a cool grappling hook. And then you got like the engineer Boris, whose trait is sentry operator and when he's closer to his sentry gun, it'll make it perform better, react faster, that kind of stuff. So the traits aren't super crazy all over the place and it seems like it's going to give DICE a lot of flexibility to make the classes a little more interesting. Ultimately, it's expanding the class customization while I believe simultaneously going to make the UI of selecting a new class or a slightly modified class a lot easier. The next big change that DICE is bringing is the ability to mix and match weapons and secondary gadgets at will among all specialists. So you can put an assault rifle, an LMG, a sniper rifle on any class you want and apparently switch out things like C4 and rocket launchers as well. Um, this adds a lot of freedom to class customization. It might also reduce the amount of weapon variety that we see on the battlefield. At least before there was a reason to use all four different classes and if those classes were designated to certain weapon types, well you're going to see a lot of different weapon types on the battlefield. Now if DICE doesn't do a fantastic job of balancing out their weapons, we might end up seeing everybody using the standard assault rifle like everywhere. This isn't a huge concern, but it is just one of those things that could potentially reduce the variety that you see on the battlefield. Now something that sounds like a very cool new feature is the ability to call in vehicles anywhere on the map. Now they haven't detailed the economics of the situation yet. Will you need a certain amount of battle points before you can call in a vehicle? Will some vehicles be more expensive than others? Will your commander call them in? We don't yet know. But what I really like about this system is that if the maps really are so much bigger and you end up getting stuck out in the middle of nowhere, well, spend a few points calling an ATV, get out of there. Because previously, well, you had to commit suicide and just respawn at a different capture point. Now, if you can call in a vehicle to get out of a, a, a remote situation or perhaps the enemy team is attacking you with tanks and you can call one in behind a structure, this should allow players to try and meet their opposition pretty effectively. I think it's going to be fun, it's going to be cool. The fact that they come in from the air and you can see them airdrop in means that if you're on an assault you might be able to anticipate what the enemy team is getting ready to fight you with. I'm sure there might be some complications to this system that arise once implemented, but I am very excited to see it. Also, dropping a vehicle on a camper sounds like a ton of fun as well. Alright, next on the list is a feature that I'm actually not super excited about and that's the plus system. This is the system that allows players to customize their weapons in real time to adjust and react to situations on the fly. Um, the example is like swapping out scopes, barrels, ammo type, or underbarrel attachment. Basically just think the Crisis weapon modification system. And while it looked really cool and suited Crisis very well, I think it's less suitable for Battlefield's multiplayer simply because it sort of takes away some of the forethought reward that goes into the game. If you're familiar with a map and you know you're going to be going a certain course, you can plan your weapon in class accordingly. Now if you screw up your weapon in class selection or find yourself in a situation you didn't predict, well you should be able to modify your weapon on the fly to better suit your situation. And while that can sound cool on the surface and probably visually look kind of neat, um, I think it's gimmicky and it detracts from planning and anticipating for what situation you're going to run into. If you pick up another soldier's weapon and you don't like the way it's modified, rather than being forced to adapt to however that player used to play, you can now then just modify that weapon to suit your own play style. Plus it's a little bit of immersion breaking. No soldier's going to be swapping out their optics and barrels mid-firefight to better suit their situation. It's, it's pretty ridiculous in that regard. The whole system just screams dice needing to add something else to the game to make it that much more marketable. And they're just like, hey, what if we just grab the crisis system and put it into our game? So it's not particularly innovative and I just don't think it fits Battlefield. That being said, it's certainly not a big concern of mine and I think if the rest of the game is solid then this system won't really matter much at all. Now while we're in the vein of talking about gimmicks, let's talk about Levolution coming back 
and, well, these massive weather events like tornadoes. Now, the tornado, I gotta admit, looks pretty cool. It certainly makes for a cool looking trailer, and hearing the developers talk about the tornado and its physics and how cool stuff and emergent stuff can happen where uh, one of the developers said a sniper was shooting at him and then a tornado grabbed the vehicle, threw the vehicle through the air and it landed on and killed the sniper that was shooting at him. Those kinds of things sound pretty cool. It's just one of those things that I could see getting old really quickly once the wow factor wears off and if the gameplay or sort of the chaotic element that it brings into the map actually detracts from the overall gaming experience, then it could get old. All in all though, it still looks great for a trailer. I'm excited to see how it changes up the game mode. I've just got my long-term reservations about whether or not tornadoes are actually gonna be a fun element to play with. Now, speaking of spicing up game trailers, I'm sure a lot of you guys caught the Rendezook in there for anyone who's newish to the Battlefield franchise. Well, the Rendezook is when a player by the name of Stun Gravy figured out in Battlefield 3 that he could jump out of his jet, eject from his jet mid-flight while there was another jet on his tail, fire off a rocket, blow up that jet in midair, and then land back in his own jet afterwards. It was a pretty impressive stunt, and even if you weren't playing Battlefield at the time, you probably saw that YouTube video that he made. It also really kind of catalyzed the whole trick-shotting element of Battlefield videos that started popping up on YouTube after that with plenty of other cool stunts happening. Now, the other little Easter egg in this scene here is that when the pilot ejects from the F-35, he pulls out a rocket launcher, which I believe is the Carl Gustav, which was a Bad Company 2 rocket launcher that um, either you loved it or you hated it. It was incredibly overpowered, and that was back when DICE wasn't patching and modifying games all the time, so it was basically overpowered for its entire lifespan in Bad Company 2, and um, it was just so crazy good, you could shoot a wall that some guy was hiding behind and they'd die instantly, and since Bad Company 2 is 90% walls and buildings and houses that were totally destructible. The Gustav was just like this insane powerhouse and people almost looked down upon it if you were using it in a server. That's how good it was. So this Rendezook with the Carl Gustav is sort of like a meme within a meme if you didn't get all the references. Now that said, with DICE putting the Rendezook into their trailer, it very much feels like DICE is like walking down the street and putting their hat on backwards and it's like, sup guys, we're cool too, right? It just makes the Rendezook less cool when you put it in the trailer. That's the whole point of emergent gameplay is that the community figures it out and does things that you never intended for them to do in the first place and then putting it in the trailer makes it feel like see you're supposed to do these cool only in battlefield moments and i don't know maybe i'm old-fashioned but i kind of preferred it when the battlefield trailers were presented as slightly more serious conflicts but anyway that's just me maybe i'm an old school gamer like that now, a feature that actually existed in the very first Battlefield game, Battlefield 1942, is finally making a return in this latest Battlefield game. It's something that a lot of players have requested for a long time, and that is having an AI mode. One that you could potentially play offline by yourself, or even squat up with some friends and practice against AI bots. This is a great feature of uh, Battlefield being a sandbox experience really does need sort of a sandbox environment where you're like, hey, I, I want to just spawn in on this map and practice or try out some of these vehicles or some of these weapons where I don't have to worry about just getting blasted by some MLG Pro running around in my server. Also, so many of the cool videos that have come out about Battlefield content creators, people doing trick shots, all that kind of stuff, that has to be done in private servers where other people aren't jumping in to mess around. And having an AI mode or a server that you can run yourself just to with you and some friends against some bots allows for a whole lot of stuff to happen. I think this is a very smart play by DICE and I think it's going to result in not only making their player base happier but also providing a lot of much higher quality online content. Now the last thing that I just want to touch on is the fact that they're announcing the next Battlefield game is going to be live service. This has been an ongoing debate in the Battlefield community for a while. I've weighed in on it multiple times so I'll just quickly reiterate my my stance on live service. I had been pushing for live service before Battlefield ever attempted live service. 
Sadly, when they attempted live service with Battlefield 5, well, it was Battlefield 5. That game wasn't going to do well if it was live service or not. I do think live service is a great way to go for the Battlefield franchise. Um, if you don't want to fragment the player base, it's absolutely awesome. And live service done well is great. There's plenty of games out there that do live service really, really well. It's just that Battlefield 5 wasn't one of them simply because it just wasn't a good game so you could point to live service or not uh, i'm still behind the live service model for the battlefield franchise so hopefully it works out well for this game now wrapping up my thoughts on battlefield 2042 reveal um i was very happy with the trailer had a smile on my face the whole time Thematically, I'm already giving it a 10 out of 10. Modern, modern futuristic is absolutely the way to go with Battlefield. I think it's the safest bet. It's the most fun bet. Um, so I'm so excited that they're going back to this era. All that being said, a reveal is a reveal. A trailer is a trailer. It's not the game. It's not representative of gameplay. Um, a ton of developers that have been sort of legacy developers for the Battlefield franchise have left DICE um, in the past couple of years. There's been a lot of people leaving. I don't know if it's necessarily more than normal or we've just been publicizing it more than normal and people have been keeping track of it. But there's definitely a lot of new people in charge of things that may have not been in charge of them before. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? I don't really know. I'm not intimately familiar with the internal workings over at DICE. So there's a lot up in the air with this new game. The trailer looks good. It seems like they're making smart decisions so far. I really like the idea of the cluster capture system in Conquest. The new class breakup system seems cool. The game modes don't seem overly ambitious, but really refining what already works well. These are all concepts and ideas that I've been a proponent of in the past. So I'm pretty happy with everything on paper so far, but none of that really matters until we get to play the game and test out the gameplay itself. Battlefield is a difficult game to do right. There's so many nuances and details that really all have to jive well together. And it's usually a recipe that is not perfected on launch day, but rather six months later or even a year later sometimes, depending on the Battlefield game. So uh, there's a lot still left up in the air, but I'm very excited to get some actual hands on time with the game and find out for myself. Of course, there will be more Battlefield content on this channel. Um, I'm getting pretty excited to get into the game and really figure out what's going on. So as always, guys, thank you for watching this lengthy opinion video. Let me know what you think about the reveal in the comments down below. And I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.